Good evening, everyone. My name is Chris Von Giorno. I'm the exec, I'm not the executive director, I'm the president of the board. I have another board meeting later tonight with a different title. Um, my name is Chris Von Giorno. I'm the board president for Yellow Springs Home Inc. Emily Seibel is our executive director. <laughs> Here at Home Inc., we've been working on our mission to strengthen community and diversity in Yellow Springs and Miami Township by providing permanently affordable and sustainable housing through our community land trust. We've been at this for almost 25 years now, which is outstanding. And as you probably noticed over the last couple of years, we've been scaling up, uh, working to build more housing as the, the scope and scale of the housing and affordability crisis in our nation has grown as well. We built six units, six homes on Dayton Street in the Forest Village Homes Project a few years back. And last year we opened 12 new homes in Glen Cottage's pocket neighborhood development. What we're gonna share with you this evening is the very exciting evolution of a project that some of you have been imagining for more than a decade. Some of you have been involved in it for maybe just a few months through some of our community learning listening sessions um, or a community survey. And whether you've been involved for that decade plus or just now getting to know the project, we thank you for your involvement. Um, I also wanna take a moment to thank Antioch College for hosting us this evening. Um, to uh, our partners at the Village of Yellow Springs for being one of the early investors in this project through some pre-development funds. Our partners at St. Mary Development who have spent more than three years of time, money, and expertise helping to uh, imagine what's possible on this site. And you'll hear from Tim Beat from St. Mary later in the program this evening. Um, in just a moment, I'm gonna pass the mic over to our executive director, Emily Seibel, who's gonna take you through the program um, but later on, we're going to hear from our project architect from City Architecture, who I'm very excited to bring to Yellow Springs, um, Tim Beat, I mentioned, and then we're going to open the floor up to questions from you and then have some more time to discuss. So again, thank you for coming this evening. I think you've already seen there's refreshments in the back, restrooms down the hall, and I believe there's a sign-in sheet going around as well. If you haven't signed in yet, please do. We'd like to make sure we keep in touch with you. What was that? And turn off your phones. Thank you for that reminder. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to hand the mic over to Emily Seibel. Okay. Um, so here we all are together. I'm Emily Seibel, Executive Director of Yellow Springs Home Inc. And some of you in the room, I, I want you to raise your hand if you've been working on this project for 10 years. How many years? 10. <laughs> Ten, Andre, Susan, huh? I was. I'm. I'm getting there. I'm gonna say twenty years. Yeah. And I know a number of people in this room, even if you didn't raise your hand, have been working on this for a long time. So uh, we are thrilled to be here with you today. Um, your community land trust, to be clear, is more than charity. We are mapping the future of Yellow Springs together. Lasting community control over one of our most precious resources, land, uh, is critical to advancing housing democracy, equity, and inclusion in Yellow Springs. Your community land trust has been hard at work for nearly a quarter of a century, and I can't believe that we're turning 25 next year. I mean, isn't that wild? Some, of, some people here helped to start Homing. So, I mean, it's really a, a phenomenal, just incredible. We can rent a car together. Um, so here's a little bit more about us. Uh, here's, oh, next slide. Yeah, I'll just nod. <laughs> um, so here's a snapshot of our accomplishments from 2021. There's lots of seating. Please come in. Don't be shy. Um, and. I'm not gonna talk about this. You can see it on your screen. If anyone has trouble reading what is on the screen and uh, has a question, just raise your hand and we can, we can read what's on there. We're also videotaping this and it will be uh, aired um, on our website. Uh, on <laughs> so you can uh, log in and watch it at any point. Next slide, please. And here is an aerial view of the Glen Cottage's pocket neighborhood, um, which is the largest project that we've done so far. The community really supported this and made it possible. Uh, and it really shows what can be done on one acre of infill development. 
Uh, so in total, we have 26 forever affordable single family homes serving families. Uh, we also have 14 rentals that are not restricted to seniors in our community land trust. We're not done developing single family housing. I just wanna be really clear about that. It's not a zero sum game, uh, but this senior focused project responds to a really critical and major local need that's driven by residents and also the site itself. The need for senior housing in Yellow Springs is acute and has only risen over time. I think everybody in this room knows someone who's had to move away and everybody also probably knows somebody who's struggling to, in place. There are not enough safe senior housing options in Yellow Springs and that's been true for a long time and it's getting more true and more acute as time goes on. A senior housing working group was established in uh, 2012 with leadership from Suzanne Patterson, Andre Bognar, Helen Iyer, and Susan Stiles. <laughs> and um, later the group expanded. But this independent grassworks group looked at every single site in the community and picked this one as the site for senior housing. Uh, this is infill development at its finest. And you can see from this map that it makes sense to put senior housing here. It's across the street from Friends Care Community, um, which also has the rehab facility, all kinds of support services. Um, it's also right next to the Miami Township Fire Rescue, which provides emergency medical services, EMS, they have an ambulance. Um, and then you can see it's just a couple of blocks from Antioch College and the Wellness Center, it's about a half a mile from downtown, and it's on, along the Green Cats accessible low cost bus line. So we think this is a really great site for senior housing and the site for senior housing. And um, you can see uh, this is part of the project history going back a decade. And I didn't put the, the efforts be prior to Yellow Springs Home Inc. getting involved, which were substantial and not insignificant. So this is something the community's wanted for a really long time, and I have to thank um, the board of Yellow Springs Home Inc. under the leadership of Chris Giorno. I also want to thank um, the Senior Housing Working Group for really carrying the flame. You know, every project like this doesn't just happen on its own. The market's never going to make something like this happen. So the fact that you kept meeting despite uh, a lot of setbacks um, and carried the, the vision for this project really inspired us. Um, I promised you in 2012, I remember saying this, <laughs> that I would be unflagging in my enthusiasm until there was senior affordable housing in Yellow Springs. And um, I remain committed to that promise and thank you for sticking with us. Oh. <laughs> So now is the time that this project is gonna to come to fruition. And it's really reimagined with community support. I think you can see on this slide, you know, we tried a few different times to do a big, large senior project uh, apartment building. It's clear that tax credit funding doesn't make sense for Yellow Springs right now. That could change, but right now it's not, and the need's not going away. Um, so we pivoted and went back to the drawing board. Um, here is our project name. It is subject to change. Naming rights are available if there are any major donors in the room. <laughs> but um, we have a couple of reasons we chose this. One is the Cascades at Glen Helen. We wanted to have a local connection. And also, um, it's something that is arranged or occurring in a series or succession where one piece leads to the next. And that's the story not only of a phased project, but it's also the story of the project where one attempt led to the next and each attempt we've made has taken something from the one before to make it better. And I think you're really gonna like uh, what we have to share today. This is just some of the public input uh, that we, has informed our project choices over the years. Um, these outreach events were designed to garner public input 
from the community in the areas of design, the site plan, the location of the site, what kinds of amenities there will be, the development itself, and even the management and some of the policies. So this is not an exhaustive list, but this is some of uh, the community feedback that we got. And you can see a, a word cloud from 2018 that I found in our, our archives. Um, I also wanted to talk just a little bit about the need. There is pent up demand for this project. Uh, we recently looked at an Opportunity 360 community dashboard report through Enterprise Community Partners. And it's estimating that now more than half of renters in Yellow Springs and a quarter of homeowners are housing cost burdened. That means that you're paying too much in housing, it's not affordable, and you often have to make choices between necessities to make ends meet. Um, we also lack housing for seniors and specifically housing that is safe for aging in place, that reduces isolation through a sense of community and that's affordable to seniors who are so often on fixed incomes and make much less now than they did earlier uh, in their career. And there's also a much broader impact uh, on our overall housing market by bringing a project like this online. This isn't just about senior housing. This is about expanded choice and increased housing mobility. Uh, right now we're lagging behind our neighboring communities in terms of housing choice, and that can have an impact on rents. We're, we're squeezed, there aren't a lot of places to go, uh, and that can have a real impact on pricing. And that's, this is, a quote from the housing needs assessment. And then um, as of today, there are over 275 households on our rental interest list at Yellow Springs Home Inc. waiting for an affordable rental to become available. And that's, that's uh, in addition to that, we have dozens of households in our Home Buyer Getting Ready program who work with Chris Hall, our program manager. And we get calls every week, multiple calls every week. Uh, I think we're really feeling how desperately needed this project is in the community right now. So uh, we had a bunch of assumptions based on you know the last three attempts uh, over the last decade about what people wanted, but we wanted to spot check them. So in June, we had uh, two listening sessions as well as a community survey. Uh, where all together we engaged over 90 residents to learn about your preferences. Um, and so here you can see uh, we, the first thing we asked people was we showed the, the prior design and we said, uh, what do you like about it? And here are the top five, Affordable, affordability being number one, energy efficiency, outdoor gathering and green space, community-centered housing to reduce isolation, and serving as many seniors as possible. We also have write-in responses. Just a second, Chris. Uh, location, close to downtown, and the obligatory, nothing. <laughs> we're, we're trying to really keep it real with you and like we're gonna share uh, the full spectrum of public feedback, so. Uh, then we asked what people didn't like about the last design. The building is too tall, uh, preferred that we serve as wide a range of incomes as possible, and uh, would prefer more of a cottage look, like the recent Glen Cottages Pocket neighborhood. And then um, this is one of my favorite written responses. I'm not going to read it, but you can read it. <laughs> I don't think many people can read that. Who, who wants to volunteer? It's very small. small. Oh, you want me to read that? Yeah. Okay. You can impersonate the author. <laughs> This, was not my, this is not my response. <laughs> this is a piece of architectural schlock. It's an off-the-rack design that looks like an auto-centric assisted living center. <laughs> so we, we asked for feedback and people gave it to us, which we appreciate uh, and take into consideration. And then, and then we also got some comments like this. Any progress for seniors is good. Don't let the perfect kill the good. Just one second. And I'm not gonna read all of these quotes, um, but we did also provide three uh, potential design inspirations and ask people, what did you like about these, um, 
does this, do, do, would these be useful as inspiration for a new project? What's the reason? Um, and there were a couple of outliers, uh, including wanting the former building because it served more seniors. We also got uh, at least one comment that was not wanting any buildings at all ever, period, because of the environmental impact. But overall, the responses were really positive um, across all three designs, and, but one design was the clear winner. And that was the bottom one. Um, I think people really uh, appreciated the classic look of the design, the front porches, and the, it looked more like a home um, than apartments or a large-scale building, and it fit in with the character of Yellow Springs. That's what we heard overall. Um, and there was some concern expressed over the size of the buildings um, and then about accessibility, but overall it was uh, very positive. How many dwellings are within that building? Um, so Patty just asked how many dwellings are in that building, and I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many were in that example? It was at least four. I think it might have been a fourplex, but it's hard to tell how deep it, it was. Four, four to eight, let's say. Um, so we also asked about some other stuff. Uh, and our architect's going to go into more detail, who's here with us tonight. Um, and so in terms of community partnerships, uh, Friends Care Center was at the top of everybody's list. We agree. Um, People did want one-to-one -one parking so long as there were uh, considerations for drop-off pickup, visitor parking, ADA uh, accessible spots, and emergency vehicle access. Uh, In-unit amenities, no surprise here, but laundry was hands down number one. <laughs> uh, storage number two, and something that comes up in every one of our listening sessions since I started with Home Inc, um, pet-friendly policies. People really want to be able to have pets, um, and we, we will allow pets. I can <laughs> pledge to you. Um, and then in terms of outdoor amenities, people wanted uh, shaded outdoor sitting areas. That was the top choice. Uh, porches were very um, uh, celebrated across the different stakeholder groups, walking paths and gardens and native plantings. And at least one person who I see here um, suggested a sensory or a therapeutic garden, which I think is a great idea. Um, and then the, probably the biggest point of tension or, or the, where people had a, a variety of opinions was around accessibility, every unit being fully wheelchair accessible versus some second story units to serve as many people, uh, seniors as possible. Um, there were mixed opinions. Uh, but overall, I think people felt like as long as there were cons uh, considerations for accessibility, such as staircases wide enough to accommodate a stair lift uh, if needed, that some upstairs units were okay. Um, and our original idea was to have about half up, half down, uh, but based on the, the feedback that we got, we changed the design. So now three quarters of the units are down and just a smaller handful up. Um, on the second floor, and uh, our architect will go into more detail about that. Uh, and then the other trade-off, or the other thing that we, we really had a question about was the for sale homes. Um, we wanted to include some for sale homes in addition to rentals, uh, and those units uh, would be along Marshall Street, which is part of a residential corridor. And so the question is, should it be senior restricted, or senior focused, meaning uh, families could move in, inter it could be intergenerational, but with first floor universal design features. And the response we got pretty overwhelmingly was um, make it open so that it could be intergenerational. Um, and then we asked about bedrooms, bathrooms, and we'll, we'll get into more of that. Uh, we also had a listening session with the neighbors in addition to um, several one-on-one -on -one meetings taking place over a series of years in, during past um, uh, tax credit applications. I see Tim, Tim Beats here, he was in the living room, I think, for some of those. Uh, but we had a one larger neighbor session. And this is not an exhaustive list, but um, these are some major themes. The, the one that came up a lot was that there are some woods 
in the middle, kind of on one side in the middle of the development where there are deer, and so if we could be very sensitive to that, and as a deer advocate, um, I <laughs> pledge that we will be as sensitive as possible to, to the wildlife. Um, and then just uh, mindful of traffic, mindful of construction disturbances, uh, sound environmental design. Um, everyone likes porches. Again, the porches theme came up a lot. Uh, and then, of course, stormwater retention, um, which we're committed to, to working with civil engineering on, emergency vehicle access, a bumper to the extent possible, and guest parking. And then we just said, are there any additional comments? Um, and I didn't put them all up here, but I picked out a few that I thought uh, certainly caught our attention and um, are sort of illustrative of the, the range of public input that we got. Um, so I'm not gonna read them all here, uh, but they are up on the slide. Um, and this, this presentation, a PDF of it, will be on our website after this, as well as a recording, if you want to look at these slides uh, more. And so with that, uh, I am very excited to welcome our architect to do the big reveal, now that you've heard the public input summary. Um, and Krista Pesarczyk, did I say it right? Um, is with City Architects, which is our City Architecture, which is a phenomenal design firm out of Cleveland. She drove down today to, to present to you, um, and she uh, and her team have just been very responsive. They are gold medal um, winners <laughs> um, in terms of uh, their work with the Architectural Institute of America, um, and they have core values that align with ours and uh, a mission, I think, that really aligns with ours. So. Uh, with that, to, to come and present. Okay. Looks like the notes are in here, right? Cool. Well, thank you for welcoming me. I'm very happy to be here. I'm humbled that Home Inc. Um, and Chris Bongiorno um, invited our firm to be a part of this project. Um, you know, we, we are very strong advocates for, the, uh, for um, equity and inclusion and making sure the needs of every resident are met. And so this project, you know, um, is, is really important and it has become important to me as I, as I have been involved with it. Um, and Emily has been a great champion um, an advocate for all of you, and so recognizing her for that as well. Um, so with that, um, I would like to show, um, I think I'm okay. okay. Um, you know, so Emily gave a great um, comprehensive summary of all of the community feedback that we have heard to date, and um, we have taken that and part of our job was to translate that into design and solutions and something that is buildable. So taking all of that feedback and incorporating it um, into this project um, has been a part of what, what we've been working on all summer. Um, been doing this so you can see the notes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So, um, as was mentioned, you know, this site was selected to be this place for the, for the senior housing. Um, and, and being adjacent to Friends Care, just with that to the south, um, you know, we really thought that it was helpful to play off of that and make, make some strong connections. Um, and, and so, and the location being on the, the, the CATS route um, is really important. That helps connect uh, seniors, uh, residents who don't have cars or, or who need to go a little bit farther than maybe walking or a bicycle will take them. Um, and then, you know, having, being just moments away, a stone's throw from emergency services is also incredibly 
um, important. So, um, so uh, you know, we, we heard very resoundingly that the last design was too big. It did not fit in this context. Um, and anybody who drives down the street, I think, could see that. Um, I think that was, you know, really easy to see, you know, looking at the, the houses that are right next to this site, um, across the street, um, you know, they're one story, one and a half, two story homes, um, and they're all very, they're a mix of styles, so, um, you know, that leaves it very open, but it was, it was clear based on the feedback and, um, that, that this was not the direction to go. Um, so we started to take a look at a different, pro, different style, a different type. Um, we know that the community likes color, so we wanted to make sure we incorporated some vibrancy. We took the scale down. These are duplexes and triplexes, which means that they have two units or three units in them. Um, we made sure that all of the entrances are covered. Um, you know, and, and, and they're, they're smaller buildings, which means you don't have that shared corridor. And that was something else we heard, you know, especially in light of COVID and everything that's been going on, people didn't want to have that, that close, closed communal space where you were walking to and from your front door. So this is all, um, everybody has their own private entrance, uh, but it is covered, it is protected from the elements. Um, and, and one of the features, you know, everybody loves front porches. I love a front porch. I sit on mine all of the time. And so uh, we made sure that these also have front porches and, and they look a lot more like single family homes. They really fit, we feel, into the neighborhood a lot better. Um, touched on accessibility a little bit. We know that's very important for this population. Um, so we have a series of ground floor units that will be fully accessible. They'll have, you know, um, low thresholds, they'll have wide corridors um, that are easy to traverse if you're in a chair or using a walker or a cane so that you kind of have that un unobstructed path throughout the unit. Um, it's all on one story, um, big enough bathrooms, space to maneuver around, um, I know not everybody understands how to read a floor plan, um, but it's, it's a much more open space. We have, you know, an open kitchen uh, that you can go on both sides, a little bit of an Eden's countertop, <coughs> nice open living room. There'll be nice big windows uh, to let in some daylight. And as I mentioned, bathrooms, bedroom. There's a mix of one bedroom units and two bedroom units. Um, and laundry, uh, side by side, big enough closet that you can reach and access in your unit. So we'll, we have boards at the end, right? Mm -hmm. So people that want to come up and look and ask specific questions, we can do that at boards at the end. Um, do Um, and so this is just another, um, this is showing uh, a kind of how the first floor of a building looks like. So this has two units side by side. You can kind of see they fit together like puzzle pieces. Um, but then that, what that does is that kind of creates um, some interest in the shape of the building and the architecture on the outside so that it's not just one big flat box. There's some pushing and pulling, there's some recesses, there'll be bays and things. So. They'll look really cute. <laughs> um, and then another thing uh, that we thought was important is that even though not every unit will be fully, um, you know, fair housing accessible, ADA with the wheelchair access and everything like that, uh, there's another program, another concept that's called universal design. Um, and what that means is that it, it looks at accessibility from a holistic point of view, not just focusing on mobility, um, not just focusing on people um, with issues with movement and using wheelchairs and that. This also focuses on 
um, you know, maybe some more visual impairments or some reaching or grabbing, but maybe you're still very um, otherwise mobile. Um, so things like having a contrast between your stair risers and your stair treads, so they're easier to pick out the different, the change in the surface. Same with countertops to cabinets. Um, picking doorknobs that are a lever style, so they're easier to grasp rather than a round doorknob. Um, just small features that can make a big impact. And, and the other thing is, you know, um, even with a two-story unit, I mean, if you, if you look at different programs and different funding sources, they define senior differently. Um, you know, some are as young as 55. And it's like, well, we know plenty of 55-year-olds who can, are perfectly happy to go up and down the stairs. They just don't maybe need a big house. Um, so this is kind of reaching the entire range um, of potential residents here. What's the square footage of that? Um, I think that we're around 850 square feet. And that's a two bedroom? That's a two bedroom, yeah. <coughs> mm -hmm. um, and here's just kind of a, a building plan, again, just showing how the units, there, there's three units shown here, two on the ground floor, one above on the second floor, and kind of how those will fit together uh, to form the full building. Um, and, and just a reminder, you know, these are, these ones are the rental units, you know, and there's also going to be the, the, the for sale units. Uh, I don't think we have any of those shown as part of this presentation, but I'll point them out on the site plan when we get there. Um, but so the rental units here are more focused, are, are designed um, for seniors, and then the townhomes will be more of a um, um, senior focused, but they're a little bit more open. The for sale ones, maybe, maybe an intergenerational family, you know, maybe if there's grandparents helping to raise grandkids, and so there's different ages in the household, uh, a little bit maybe more open to families. Uh, but those ones will also have like a ground floor owner suite, like the primary bedroom and bathroom will be on the ground floor so that, um, you know, if the, you know, the owner is living there, they don't have to go upstairs to go to the bedroom but there still is another um, bedroom upstairs. Um, so with that, we'll take a look at the site. Um, so we have, uh, this is the full vision for what this development will lay out to be. Um, it's gonna happen in phases. It can't happen overnight, it can't happen all at once, but it will happen. Um, so this shows that there will be eight buildings that are closer to friends care kind of on the bottom of the site here and these ones will be the rental units and you can see that they are clustered around a, like a central green space um, the for sale units there will be 10 of them up here and they are a mix they're two-story units and they're a mix of two bedroom and three bedroom and they're all kind of one site one cohesive community and, and, and something you'll notice is that we were very intentional with creating pathways um, so that you can get out and know your neighbors and walk the neighborhood and feel comfortable and have some place to go. Um, the pathways, you know, we're, we're looking to uh, work with the village to get a crosswalk right over to the, the Friends Care campus so that if you're getting services from there, you can just walk across the street. Um, you can continue on their sidewalk loop and just keep walking around or um, as you want. Um, and then, you know, we didn't want to keep them all straight and boring. You know, there's some meandering. They'll go weave in and out of trees and gardens. Um, some of the suggestions about having native plants, pollinator gardens, sensory gardens, all of that will be designed as the project progresses. Um, so there's just some some loose indications of how those might lay out and where the paths are gonna kind of walk through those. Um, 
Underneath some of the shade trees, there will be seating areas, benches, places to rest, places to just enjoy the view, enjoy the sun. Um, and, and, and one thing that is worth noting is this is roughly the area where the existing kind of grove of trees are. And um, once we kind of progress into the next stages of development, we get a survey and kind of a better understanding of what trees are there, how healthy they are, um, kind of where exactly they are. This is just kind of a best guess from some images. Um, we'll have a better sense of how much of that we can actually preserve. So we can keep the deer. Um, and this is just a, the purple lines indicate kind of where the phases will break down. So, you know, we'll start in the bottom left and these ones will happen first. And then kind of as, as funding is available and as those first ones run out, the next wave will happen. We'll have phase two, three, the townhomes will fit in there at some point as well. Um, just as far as the ratios go, uh, the rentals are, there is about 75% of them are one bedroom units and 25% of them are two bedroom units. Um, the for sale townhomes are split about 50-50 uh, with two bedroom and three bedroom unit types. Uh, and here we are. Um, this is what this, those lines, those flat plans will hopefully look like. This is the vision. Um, so the clusters of the rental units, you can see those in the foreground. How the, the, they face each other, they face outwards. They look like um, nice homes that really fit into this neighborhood um, and how, how the site really kind of functions from a layout with the sidewalks weaving in between them connecting you through so that the rental and the for sale are one community. This is from the other side, from the north, looking south. You can see Friends Care in the background, on the top right, and just kind of how the massing of the, the, the for sale, the townhomes will look in line, and they all, you can notice that like the roof heights, the pitched roofs, they're all kind of in keeping with the rest of the, the context here. Um, and here is a rendering of what it might feel and look like from within that green space, that central gathering area. Uh, you can see you could take a walk, take a stroll through the garden, take a break on the bench under the tree. Um, meet with your neighbors, come out and say hi as they go to carry their groceries in. <laughs> um, and then here's from, from the sidewalk, what it'll look like to, to passers-by. Uh, just, just really quaint and, and cozy, but also very functional. And I think that's all I have. I think you can see that a lot of thought was put into the design, and I hope that um, uh, you find it uh, appealing, and especially uh, in contrast to the last project that design that we had. And uh, before I introduce our, our final speaker, I have to thank the Village of Yellow Springs uh, for being early in uh, to support this project. Um, they really they provided funds in this fiscal year to uh, be able to work with a high quality uh, architectural firm and create um, a, a blueprint for the site that really matches the neighborhood and reflects the community values. Um, we really couldn't have done that without the support of the village, so uh, I just want to thank the village. And also, I know we have a couple of um, elected officials here uh, with us tonight. Um, but we really are delighted to consider the village as an essential partner, uh, essential partner um, to develop affordable housing in Yellow Springs. 
Um, and so with that, I am now delighted to introduce Tim Beat, who is the president of St. Mary Development Corporation. Um, we've partnered, as, as you know, on two low-income housing tax credit um, applications. Um, Tim can, serves on our projects advisory and asset management group. He has a wealth of information, an industry expert, there's no question. Um, and we're very, very appreciative of um, the opportunity to, to learn from Tim. I could, I've learned a lot from you. Um, and also, uh, he, he is uh, affiliated with St. Mary Connect, which is a partner to us. Typically, they provide support service coordination for St. Mary projects, um, but they have a partnership to also provide them to uh, renters uh, through Yellow Springs Home Inc. Um, and they're connected to over 100 different service providers. So it's pretty wraparound and comprehensive. So um, would you like to come up, Tim? Thank you. Thanks, Emily. So St. Mary Development has been involved in this project in one way or another for, uh, for quite a few years now. Um, we were involved when we applied three times or twice and then couldn't apply a, a third time uh, for the tax credit project in that larger building that was there. I thought this was one of the best sites that I had ever seen because of the walkability. Unfortunately, the tax credit program is super competitive and the state disagreed. They did not like the site and, and uh, preferred others, which really disappointed with us. It's rare that you find a site where it has a nursing home next door that you can walk to a grocery store that has a senior center down the street. It's just very rare to find such a good site like that. Um, it's typical for these type of projects to take a long time, as Emily has shared. I rarely do you do it or are able to pull it off on the first try. We've created at St. Mary's 70 affordable housing projects in 10 states and about, uh, just we just went over half a billion dollars in um, real estate development investment for those. So we have probably looked at more than a thousand sites in our, our lifetime. And this is truly one of the best sites that I have, I have seen and um, was the reason we were so disappointed we weren't able to do a tax credit project here. But um, I share that we have had that experience and seen a thousand sites because in small towns, affordable senior housing is even more important than in larger cities. And the reason is you have people, and you know this, that they grew up here, you spent your lives here, and it's heartbreaking to see somebody have to move out of the town that they love and the people that love them because they can't afford the housing anymore. It's much more devastating than, in, um, I think, even in larger towns. People often ask me, well, who moves into these type of projects, especially in small towns? Who would a typical tenant be? And there are really three categories that we see. There are either people who live here now, there are people that lived here once and want to move back. Or there are people who are moving here because of somebody else. They have a child here. They have, there's a, there's a, a, a friend here. Rarely do we ever see people that move into um, projects in smaller towns like this that don't have a very strong, loving connection with the community around them. And that's why these projects like this are so important. One of the things that is interesting about this is that I know there's a lot of talk about we need more family housing too. One of the things I think you'll see is that because people are gonna move in from Yellow Springs, it will actually open up other housing. The people that move in and out of the housing that they're in now, so not only do you get new senior housing with this project, but you're gonna open up some family housing. So that it's, it's uh, unusual when that can happen, but when there's so few houses out there you're gonna be able to provide some housing for young family, kind of just a, as a bonus for this. One of the other things that you'll see is that as people get older, it often is a strain on, on emergency services and taxpayers, and you're gonna see as people move into this because of the partnership with St. Mary Connect and Yellow Springs Home Inc. and all of the work that they do, that people will be able to live longer independently, and which is good for them, it's what everybody wants to do. And at the same time, there'll be less of a strain on community services. Oftentimes when people live alone and they, they have to call the EMTs or, or you know, the fire department, they fall, there's, a, there's weekly incidents that they have and that goes down when you can live in a community and, and service providers can come in and see not just one resident but several residents 
And the biggest thing is when residents can look out for each other, and we see a lot of that. So people are knocking on each other's doors. Are you okay? I'm going down to the grocery store. Can I get you anything? That's just, it's, it's so important. It was interesting. I went back and looked at the housing needs assessment that, that was done in 2018, just to see, because uh, I knew that this, the demand had been around for 10 years, for 20 years or more. Um, and I took a look at it, and it, it projected that between 2017 and 2022, the, among the households aged 65 to 74, there was going to be an increase of 56 households, or 16%. And then in the 75 and older, it would increase by 37 households, or 14% by 2022. And guess what? It's 2022. <laughs> and that was just that long ago. So that's 93 more households since then. So the need for this is just huge. I mean, it's too bad that we can't be building 100 units like this, because I think they would fill up. We have one affordable project that we, we're still in construction of, there's 50 units. We have 500 people on the wait list who are interested in it because there's such a big need for it. As I said, we work with a lot of different communities but in, in Ohio um, and in other states too on projects like this. And you might think that um, most cities have an organization like Yellow Springs Home. And I just want to share with you how rare it is to have a community development corporation in any town, let alone a town the size of Yellow Springs. I have never seen it any place else. In Greene County, Zini doesn't have an organization like Yellow Springs Home. Beaver Creek doesn't. You, it, you tend to be you know, in, in Dayton and in other areas, in bigger areas, but it's so unusual which is why projects like this don't get done. If it wasn't their tenacity in pushing this forward and saying, if it takes a decade, it takes a decade. It's just so, what, what a blessing it is to your community that you have an organization to do that because it just doesn't happen very often. And when we couldn't get the tax credit, they didn't give up. We couldn't get the 50 units, but Emily said, well, then we'll go for a smaller project and you were able to do it. And I just want to say congratulations on that. That is a huge, huge, when Emily gave a presentation was not letting the, the perfect get in the way of the good. And as a community, you should be proud of that. I have not seen a community that had so much input from people, great ideas, different expertise to come in to look at. It. And you were able to take that, make compromises when you had to, and come up with something that wasn't perfect because the way the government funding works on these, you can't do what's perfect. There, you know, there's so many strings attached. But to come up with something that's truly exceptional with the limited site size and resources that we have. And I don't see a lot of communities talk about it and really give input and even show up at a meeting like this. We hold some meetings like this and nobody shows up. Nobody in the community really cares. So you just have so much to be proud of. I look forward to the day when we can come for the grand opening. We, we are very fortunate to have someone with the expertise of Tim um, joining us every month to help advise on projects. And I mean, it's really a phenomenal, phenomenal resource. Thank you. <clears throat> so um, in addition to St. Mary Connect, I just wanted to give a brief overview of the support services partnerships that are already in place uh, for this project. We're gonna have more too, but this is an initial list. And these are signed MOUs, agreements um, that, are, that are in place right now uh, that are serving our existing rental portfolio and will also be serving this project. So what is next? Um, the first, the very first uh, phase of this will be eight units. Uh, that's going to be two triplexes and one duplex, so six units downstairs, two units upstairs, um, and then a mix of six uh, one bedrooms and two two bedrooms. Um, and I think they're the first phase uh, of the project. I can show you right here. Is uh, it's just the this part of this height, so we'll, we'll start. Um, and that's on a, approximately four parcels. 
So uh, because we have a lot of challenges ahead of us, um, you know, in terms of <laughs> uh, volatile construction costs, having to fundraise a whole bunch of money from God knows where, I'm, I'm just kidding, uh, we, we have a plan. But, um, <laughs> you know, construction costs through the roof. I mean, there's all kinds of things. There's so many things uh, that are challenging, and, and most of them come down to money. Um, but I can say that uh, right now, our best guess is that the total development cost will be $1,938,755 for the first eight units. Uh, we plan to construct this in four phases, combining phases as is feasible given the funding landscape right now, this is what we can do. Um, and so uh, I do wanna say um, that we are delighted to already have construction financing and permanent financing committed to for phase one. And that is because uh, Wright Pat Credit Union took a risk to work with us. And they have never, this the, one of the largest credit unions in the country, they've never, um, worked on a federal home loan bank affordable housing project before and they said let's be partners and let's do this and Donna Hale from Wright Pad is here if you want to wave Donna <laughs> so Don, Donna used to work at the Yellow Springs Credit Union and uh, also has very close ties with Friends Care community and she really went the extra mile to push this through. So uh, we're delighted to work with you. Um, so far we have $385,500 committed in funding from the Village of Yellow Springs, the Finance Fund, and the Ohio Department of Developmental Disabilities, as well as an agreement for donated land for the first phase. And we have two more big sources and then a bunch of little sources to get. Um, the little sources are always the hardest. That's like after the big money comes in, there's, you know, you might need another 200,000. Well, where does that come from? So that's something, it's, we call it the funding stack. So we're, we're piecing it together. Um, the next big chunk that um, we have applied for is through the Federal Home Loan Bank Affordable Housing Program. Um, that is more competitive than ever this year with less money than ever to give out, which uh, seems to be the trend of things. Um, and so we applied for $400,000 uh, through them. And I believe the results are posted tomorrow. But I called them today, and I'm very happy to announce that we got funded. <laughs> so um, that is really, like, we're pretty... Excited she kept about that. Secret. I didn't know this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I shouldn't tell you that I was going to call because what if it was bad news? Then I'd have to sit on it and I didn't want to, you know. But no, we're really, and that really speaks to uh, not only our partnership with, with Donna and Wright Pat Credit Union, um, but it also speaks to the support of the Morgan Family Foundation, it and it speaks to the support of the staff that we have here at Home Inc. who are <laughs> awesome. I mean, we're competing against, you know, the big for-profit multi-state tax credit organizations for these funds that are extremely limited. So it's a big deal and it's because we have um, long-term staff that have been committed to Home Inc. Uh, and have worked on a number of these projects and I think their experience shows. And we're very fortunate to have gems, uh, true gems, in our midst. Um, and thanks to Emily Seibel. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I think the the this is an easy project to be committed to for over a decade because it really is gonna make such a big difference. Um, so the next stop, now that we have uh, close to $800,000 committed for phase one, is to go in next year for Ohio Housing Finance Agency GAP funds. Um, and it, we think that'll take the biggest chunk, and right now we're fundraising for just under 200,000 
Uh, and that, of course, as I said, is the hardest money to get. So um, we welcome ideas. We're also uh, working with area foundations, but we're very confident that this is moving forward. And not in several years, but it's moving forward um, within the next year uh, is our goal. Of course, things outside of our control. But in my experience, once the Federal Home Loan Bank is in, it is happening. The momentum is there. So um, thank you for sticking with us. Um, and I just have a couple of extra prompts. Uh, we have an FAQ sheet for those of you who are interested in uh, questions like, what are the AMI cutoffs? If I have assets, what does that mean? Um, questions that we've gotten over the years um, from people interested in our rentals. Um, we also have a feedback card, and it's just for open-ended feedback. You know, are we headed in the right direction? What questions you have? What ideas? Um, and then we have some sign-up lists. So that's if you're interested in potentially living here or you know someone who is, we have sign-up uh, sheets for that. We also have sign-up sheets for just continuing to learn about the project, um, staying on the radar, because we will have asks uh, uh, for additional support, whether that be writing a letter, showing up at a meeting, um, participating in some way in a campaign, volunteering. Um, so we're, it's really gonna take a community effort to keep this going, and um, we, we're asking you for your support. Um, and we also are asking you to become a member if you're not. There is sign-up information uh, outside, but you know, to keep, to keep the momentum going, we really count on our members, donors, the community, um, and so we ask that you join us and be part of this. Um, and that's it, thank you. Please stick around. <laughs>